It is a deceptively warm winter's night. Nothing is heard in the royal garden save for the sounds of an owl in the distance and the rustle of the king's robes. He walks down the path, silver moonlight bathing his skin in a pale light. Under a nearby willow tree there sits a bench, and the king makes his way to it, breathing in the cold night air. It has been a while since he has found the time to enjoy his gardens in peace, and he savors every moment. Under a willow tree, the evening is peaceful, and the king begins to grow drowsy, eventually slipping off into slumber. A quiet hour passes before a figure makes himself known, stepping out of a shadowed arch into the moonlight. As he creeps through the winding paths, something in his hand glints wickedly. Metal? Or is that glass? The figure pushes the branches of the willow aside and makes his way towards the king. Slowly, the figure lowers his hood, revealing a face eerily similar to the king's. It is Claudius, the king's brother. He softly pushes the king's golden hair away from his face and with a gloved hand holds up a small vial filled with an amber liquid that seems to swirl and move of its own accord. Slowly, oh so carefully, Claudius uncorks the vial and pours it into the king's ear. For a second, all is still. Then, the screaming begins. Ah! Woo! Okay, that was a mouthful. I just wanted to say welcome, lovely listeners and players. As you might have guessed, the king passed away shortly after the aforementioned screaming. The setting is Denmark, and the year is 1485. Welcome to the 80s of the Middle Ages. Although they didn't have perms and synths, they did have plagues and swords. So, like, the same thing. All in all, this isn't your typical D&D podcast. Both political and social tensions are rising as we set our scene. To get us started, do the players want to introduce themselves? Um, I'll go first. I'm Hamlet. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm a human warlock. I'm Crown Prince of Denmark, philosophy major, and wannabe poet. Anyway, I grew up with Ophelia and Horatio, who you'll meet soon. I used to date Ophelia, but we all grew up together, and all three of us are really close. I regale them with my writing and revolutionary philosophy, and they laugh when I run into a wall while it's dark, because apparently I'm the only one who didn't get dark vision. Okay, I think that's all. Who's next? Um, I can go. I'm playing Horatio, he, him, a tiefling cleric. I'm quite smart as well as... bookish? Is that a word? Alright, more like scholarly, I guess. Oh, I'm a med student because I like helping people, and a philosophy minor because I like helping Hamlet in particular. Okay, that's it, I think. I am playing Ophelia. I go by she, her. I am a half-elf druid. I am, by far, the most competent one of the group. I am also the youngest in my household and the only half-elf. My mother is Paulina, who serves in the king's court, and my brother Laertes is overseas at college. I love flowers and nature, and I'm friends with Hamlet and Horatio, or the two H's, as I so lovingly call them. I dated Hamlet before this all started, but we aren't together anymore, something I haven't told my family about. I'm guest starring as a ghost of King Hamlet, he, him. I died just a few moments ago. Right now, I get to come back and to make trouble, give people swords, and generally cause havoc. Woo-hoo! And finally, tis I, your glorious DM, her spake, she, her. I'll be playing literally everyone else. Okay, I know I said I was done with the prologue, but I lied. Here's some more necessary information. After King Hamlet died, Gertrude decided to marry his brother, which was weird. But anyway, Hamlet, you know, not the dead King Hamlet, has just returned from college. And their bunchback, bull-pizzled, worm-infested prune of an uncle is throwing an engagement party. And Hamlet and Horatio have been forced into attendance. I'm sitting by the snack table with an entire cheese board in my lap, because this is ridiculous. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw and resolve itself into a dew. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Your mother, Queen Gertrude, walks over and ruffles your hair as she sits down next to you. Oh, I lean my head on her shoulder. Why must we attend these tedious festivities? To all my knowledge, I thought this was a funeral. Don't seek for thy noble father in the dust, Hamlet. All that lives must die passing through nature to eternity. 
Claudius walks over as well and awkwardly places his hand on your shoulder in an attempt at fatherly support. I shake off his hand. He's not my dad. We pray you throw to the earth this unprevailing woe and think of us as a father. Uh, Queen Gertrude gives you a look, Hamlet, like she knows she's going to scold you later and leaves with Claudius as your friend Horatio walks up. Oh, wait, that's me. Um, hail to your lordship. I'm glad to see you well, Horatio. The same, my lord. Won't make you from Wittenberg. A truant disposition, sir. I skipped school. <laughs> I would not hear your enemy say so, nor shall you do mine ear that violence. I know you are no truant. Why are you an Elsinore? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee do not mock me. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon. That it did. The funeral dinner did coldly furnish the marriage tables. Horatio, my father! Methinks I see my father! Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. Horatio, roll me wisdom. That's a 14 plus 3, which is 17. Okay, what was that for? As Hamlet says this, you are reminded of a strange occurrence that happened yesterday night. You were hanging out with some of the guards on the battlements when suddenly the air got frosty and it seemed as if the moon was snuffed out. From across the wall, a ghostly figure appeared. Before it vanished, you were able to catch a glimpse of its face, and it was the spitting image of King Hamlet. Okay, and I don't remember anything else? Well, it did try to speak to you, but then morning came and it disappeared. Okay. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw? Who? Well, I guess it was your father. But where was this? Upon the platform where the guards watch. Did you speak to it? I did, but answer made it none. It lifted up its head, like as it would speak, but then morning light came and it vanished from our sight. Tis very strange. What looked he frowningly? Well, a countenance more in sorrow than anger. And fixed his eyes upon you? Most constantly. I wish I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Well, if it assumes my father's personal speak to it, I pray you, if you have concealed this sight, keep a secret a while yet. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. My duty to your honor, my lord. Your love is mine to you. Farewell. I bow and I'll leave the room. I wave and then continue stuffing my face with cheese. And I will end the scene, I guess. Hey, uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm taking notes and I wanted to be clear on a couple of things. Oh, a note taker. Wonderful. Yes, go on. Okay, so we already know that Hamlet's dad died and then their mom married Claudius, right? Yep. But then their dad is back. Well, a ghost of my father? Or maybe some spirit pretending to be my father? We're not entirely sure yet. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and we're meeting up on the battlements tonight to catch another glimpse. Maybe we'll solve the mystery then. Okay, let's go ahead and skip to the battlements. It's cold, y'all. Like, air bites shrewdly. It is very cold, cold. Hamlet, your father tended to walk around here, so your hopes are high. And Horatio, you're kind of freaked out because this is where you saw a mother freaking ghost a few nights ago. All right, game away. I'm standing on the battlements looking around for my dad. I'm standing beside Hamlet, unhappily freezing my butt off. The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse, keeps wassail and the swaggering upspring reels. And as he drains his drafts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Horatio, the temperature suddenly drops and a shiver runs down your spine. Then, in the corner of your eye, you see the mother freaking ghost whooshing by! Look, my lord, it comes! Angels and ministers of grace, defend us! Be thou a spirit of health or goblin damned, bring with thee airs from heaven or blasts from hell, be thy intents wicked or charitable, thou comest in such a questionable shape. <laughs> it beckons you to go away with it. Then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why? What if it tempt you toward the flood, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff? Wait, can I get an insight check? Yeah, go for it. Oh, that's an 18. Okay, so you're 
quite sure that it's your father, but he's different somehow. It's almost like he climbed his way back out of the underworld to tell you something incredibly important and or give you powers or or something like that. In that case, it waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee. I grab Hamlet by the arm. <gasps> Hold off your hands! Be ruled, you shall not go! Unhand me! <sighs> By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. I say away. Go on, I'll follow thee. I follow the ghost. They wax desperate with imagination. I'll follow. Tis not fit thus to obey them. (sighs) Where wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. My eye is almost gone. When I choose sulfurous and tormenting flames, must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend me to my serious hearings to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. Thou art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, due for a certain term to walk the nights, and for the days confronted you with mass and fires. Till the foul crimes done in my days and natures are burnt and purged away. Oh, God! Even now, you have not yet heard the worst. This most foul and strange are natural deeds. Murder! The most foul as the best it is! Murder? Now I am with you. Tis given out that sleeping in my orchard, a serpent's thugging for a whole year of Denmark is by forced process of my death. Frankly abused, but no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting back for his life, now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle! A that instance, that adultery to beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts of wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce on his shameful lust. The will of my most screaming, virtuous queen. Oh, most pernicious woman! O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain! If thou didst ever by the upon his love, avenge his most foul, most unnatural murder. Taste me to know that I, with wings as swift as meditation, or the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. He uses thought I give you here, endowed with my essence, a set bigger thou shalt toss it, and gain the mystical power, which is a tune to thy charm. What magical power is this? Patient is a virtue that should have been left before the outlet. I cannot tell you about the power that you keep interrupting me. Supreme hold now. You hold an enmity for the blood of man, as those natural gifts are not enough to prevail against that old flesh and blood. And so this faculty I bestow unto you. What faculty is this? How do your questions keep getting more damp? If we could just be quiet, so I can tell you about the gosh darn sword! But this power never will be moved or a court in the shape of heaven, but a fiery demon will to beware of how it suit itself, a celestial bed, and crown garbage but you would do now that remember me. Oh all you host of heaven, O oh, earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? Oh fie, hold, hold my heart, and you my sinews grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee, I thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee, within the book and volume of my brain, and through the sword hung on my belt, thou sayest adieu, adieu, remember me, and I have sworn it. So, did he just offer me a magic sword? Yeah, you didn't get that even with all your questions? It it was a hexblade, to be exact. You're a warlock, Hamlet. Ophelia, we are going to your scene now. You're in your house with your mother and brother, Laertes, who's about to leave for college. After he finishes packing, he comes to say goodbye while your mother is fussing over the final details of his journey. He walks over to you and says, How dost thou do, dearest sister? I'm doing quite well, dear brother. I have all my necessities embarked for my journey. Promise you'll remember to write to me while I'm gone? You must let me hear from you. Of course I will write to you. Do you doubt that? I'll also send flower pressings. I have some for you now. I hand him some sweet pea flowers, which, fun fact, are for departure. 
Take these, sweet pea, and make sure you don't let your room get to be as morbid as Hamlet's, with their butterfly weed door and their thorny doormat that pricks those they do not want their sapping color from their petals until the unwanted visitors are drained of purpose. Does Laertes know you and Hamlet aren't together anymore? Uh, no, I haven't told any of my family. Okay. Speaking of Hamlet, sister, please be careful. They're a flirt. They're not serious and it is not going to last. Perhaps they love you now, of which I am doubtful. Their royalty and an arranged marriage is likely, for they are subject to their birth. Remember, I said it will not last. Be wary, for the best safety lies in fear. It will too last. You see me as a child in need of protection, but I am no Daisy. I am- Ophelia Daisy Amastasia, you better think Uh, about- I, I will the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But good brother, do not show me the steep and thorny way to heaven while you yourself tread on a primrose path of dalliance. Don't give me advice if you yourself don't plan to take it. (laughs) I will take my own wisdom. Uh, The door opens and in comes your mother. She sees you and Laertes talking and comes over. What's going on? Why hasn't my son left yet? Oh, are we discussing Ophelia's poor choice in romance? Uh, I do not have poor choice in romance, but... I I will be Seclamen, subject to your will, and heed your advice, as I realize you are old and wise, even though you're a total buzzkill. Pardon? I said I will be subject to your will. I tell the truth. I am no deceptive snapdragon. I am absolutely lying right now, being a total deceptive snapdragon. Uh, Then make a deception check, Ophelia. Okay, that is, uh, <laughs> oh no, that is a five and minus one, that's four. I am really bad at lying. I promise I will never see or acknowledge they exist. I swear, completely serious. Lee, n- yep, no lies here, not one, none. Okay, Ophelia, if you even acknowledge they exist, you will be in trouble. I mean it. You are not to speak to them, and if you are seen with them, there will be consequences. You'd have to leave the castle. I could send you to stay with your grandmother. I know she has a wonderful city job. Lots of shops there, too. She doesn't live near any gardens. I will not let you act as a little green girl and... Let them play on your own naivety, then break you. Oh, oh God. Shops. The worst thing, a symptom of cities and the gardens there. Oh, they are. They only have common flowers. No ornate ones like cobaya or burdock, which they should have burdock because it would describe the setting. I would be tensy if I were forced to go there. Okay, I'm going to need you to roll a charisma saving throw to see if you're intimidated. Okay, not 20. Hang on a sec. Okay, I'm back. Nat 20, minus 1, 19. But that was a natural 20! That is a success. Um, that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> okay, um, you are so not intimidated that you feel a fire in your stomach not only do you want to ignore them you actively want to disobey them to prove them wrong oh heck yes i am looking for hamlet immediately oh dear that that sounds awful excuse me i am going to head out for a completely innocent reason uh goodbye Leertes. bye mom i am not doing anything suspicious Farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I had said to you. Yes, yes, bye! I head out of the room and go look for Hamlet. Okay, roll investigation to see how long it takes to find them. Okay, that's a three plus five, eight. All right, okay. So it's the next day. Ophelia, as you walk through the castle, trying very hard not to look suspicious... You hear snatches of Hamlet's voice as they monologue in an empty room. Hold, hold, my heart. Do not grow old, but bear me stiffly up. Our work is not yet done. Remember thee, I, thou poor ghost, while memory still wraps my head. I cannot help 
but remember thee. Over that villain, smiling, damned villain. I will avenge you, father. I take out my notebook and begin writing. My supreme overlord. Ah! Alas, your ink, it's blood everywhere. Did I surprise you? So it seems you did. Tis no matter, for I have seen and heard things tonight that would make such trivial matters seem so small as to become unnoticeable. Are you so absorbed that you don't notice that your favorite tunic is now stained with the ink of iron galls? What? Oh. Oh! Ah! Oh no! Oh. Um, yeah, that's not coming out. Okay. I do care about that. <laughs> Horatio, as you wander through the castle, you hear the panicked shouts of Hamlet. I run into the room, sword drawn. You dash in, expecting a fight. Instead, you are met with the sight of Hamlet hurriedly dabbing at the spilled ink on their clothes, and Ophelia laughing giddily. Ugh. How is it, my noble lord? Ha, ah, Horatio, tis well that you are here, for I have news to share with Ophelia. I wiggle my eyebrows at Horatio, hoping he gets the message. <gasps> oh, good. Do tell. One second thought. No. You'll reveal it to all your little flower comrades. Not I, by a heaven. Not even my cathedral bells vine. Nor I, my lord. How say you then? You'll be secret? I. You can count on us. Well, there's now a villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an errant knave. There needs no ghost come to the grave to tell us this, my lord. What? <laughs> Why, right, you are right, but touching our vision of evening past, it is an honest ghost I saw last night, let me tell you. <gasps> Never in my life have I seen such a blade, my lord. It seems to almost... it seems to glow in the light. Nay, Horatio, this blade does glow. What? What is this witchcraft, Hamlet? Twixt the hours of eleven and twelve, a spectre appeared before me, Ophelia. I followed its dogged footsteps, and once we reached the edge of light, when all the world is quiet and not a creature stirred, it came to me. My father, as a red sun and yet cold as death. He bid me avenge his death, for as it happens, the wicked and pernicious Claudius killed him with the most cowardly of devices, poison. Upon my acceptance of this mission, he gifted me this blade, his emblem, to aid me in his quest to rid Denmark of a most foul corruption. And now, as you are friends, scholars, and family to me, give me but one poor request. What is it, my lord? We will. Never make known what you have seen and heard tonight. Of course, we shall not. Never. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, we won't. We said so. Swear upon the sword. We have already sworn, Hamlet. But upon my sword. Swear. He is with us now. Never speak of this that you have seen, please, my friends. Swear. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. I cannot help but think this is all but a dream. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Aye, then I swear it, my lord. I am like the white rose, Hamlet. Not but we three shall hear of this. Rest, rest, perturbed spirit. Oh, my friends, with all my love, I do commend me to you. Let us go in together, and still with your fingers on your lips, I pray. And I put my hands over their mouths. Mm. 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 Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Come, let us go in together. <laughs> These are strange times indeed, dearest Hamlet. But we shall survive the darkest night, when we are each other's sunflowers. Come, my friends. My mind is already beginning to overflow with inspiration. Indeed, my lord. We'll turn a plan to action yet. Okay. Wow. So, let's go ahead and break for this week. Tune in next time for... Well, we'll just have to see. Ophelia has joined the gang, a magic sword is in the mix, and secrets are tying them all together. So at this point, anything is possible. Stay tuned! Thank you to Queen Elizabeth I. We appreciate you not chopping off our heads, despite the fact that you have beheaded many other artists. Our theme song is The Magician's Study, written by Kevin Taylor and performed by Lyndon Meyer. This episode is written and edited by Ariel Northcutt, Alonia Meyer, and Zia Schwartz-Kinsey. 
Actors are Ronan Boren as King Hamlet, Lyndon Meyer as Horatio, Ariel Northcutt as Hamlet, Alonia Meyer as Ophelia, and Zia Schwartz-Kinsey as the DM. Additional soundtrack and sound effects by Ariel Northcutt and Lyndon Meyer. Graphics by Beatrice Rose and Ariel Northcutt. This is an Improv Ed Shakespeare production. Disclaimer, this is not in fact a D&D podcast, and it is a work of fiction. Find us at improvedshakespeare.com. For more content, such as Ophelia's flower language, King Hamlet's violin recordings, Hamlet's attempts at poetry, and, of course, the occasional poison recipe, check us out at 2B Shakespeare. That's the numeral 2, the letter B, Shakespeare. Thank you for listening.